Tired of dealing with annoying flies, fruit flies, and gnats in your home? The Zevo Flying Insect Trap is your ultimate solution. Don't wait. Check out the link in the video description now to get your Zevo Flying Insect Trap on Amazon and enjoy a bug-free home today. Jeremy Clarkson has invested almost £1 million into buying his own pub in the Cotswolds. But how easy is it to make a profit from running a pub? The Clarkson's Farm TV presenter purchased the Windmill Hostelry in five acres of the Oxfordshire Cotswolds countryside as a freehold. This means he owns the pub outright and can choose what beer is served. Only about a third of Britain's 46,800 pubs are freeholds. The rest are run by tenant landlords and managers who are often employed by a public house chain or a brewery group that owns the property and stipulate what alcohol can be served. With pubs closing at the rate of more than one a day, 509 calling last orders last year, according to the British Beer and Pub Association, it's a financially resilient buyer who takes one on. However, any prospective buyers need not be as wealthy as the former Top Gear presenter, whose net worth is believed to be around £55 million. Websites such as Property Link advertise freehold pubs from about £100,000, such as Ramage's Bar in Kilburnie, Ayrshire, £98,000, and the Goat in Penegros, Carnarvon, £100,000. Pub industry trade publication The Morning Advertiser also offers details of taverns for sale. After the initial business outlay, turning a profit from running a pub is an ever-increasingly tough challenge. Fewer people are spending money going out due to the cost-of-living crisis. The average spend on a pub visit is just over £20, according to data collector Statistica. Even the star-pulling power of Clarkson is no guarantee he will make money. The film director Guy Ritchie spent £2.5 million on the Punchbowl pub in Mayfair, London, in 2008, and it was popular with local celebrities, yet he sold it to pub chain Cirrus Inns in 2013. But a great success story that has been bucking the trend in recent years is community-owned pubs. The number has doubled in a decade to 182, with 16 opening in 2023. Many get a boost from a financial grant, such as the Community Ownership Fund. Chris Cowshare is head of policy at the charity Plunkett UK, which guides communities on how to buy pubs when they are under threat or closed. He says, people often talk about how much they would like to own a pub. These days it is far more than just about serving drinks and food, to survive, you have to offer far more. Cowshare adds, costs can be crippling and if you do not have Jeremy Clarkson's deep pockets, a great solution is to get your whole community involved in buying shares in a pub, typically at least 100 people investing a minimum of £50 each for a stake. This way, locals have skin in the game and are enthusiastic in ensuring the pub thrives as a business. He adds, share ownerships typically raise £200,000 in communities to purchase a property. We provide guidance and paperwork on setting one up. There are also grants available that we can help people apply for as well as the option of taking out a bank business loan. Pub finance interest rates on secured loans and commercial mortgages from specialists such as Rangewell start from 2 percentage points above base rate, so 7.25%. The White Swan in Gressenhall, Norfolk, had stood by the side of the village green for more than 500 years but was near to closing until locals stepped in five years ago. Fruit farmer Alex Begg is among the 440 village residents who invested at least £50 each to buy the pub. Giving more does not give investors a bigger say, but a larger share in the pub, with potential to earn dividends if the group decides the pub is making enough money to give back some profits. However, investors should go in without expecting to make money. About £270,000 was raised by selling stakes in the White Swan. A further £70,000 came from a community ownership fund grant and £50,000 from a bank loan. This covered not only the £190,000 to buy the pub but a further £200,000 to do up the dilapidated building. Begg says, it is important not to underestimate the renovation costs when buying a pub. The White Swan could not have been run as a viable business without the restoration as it was dated, with old-fashioned electrics and plumbing that needed upgrading to modern standards. We had to rip out the old loose and make a new entrance way right at the center of the pub. Although families are welcome, it was necessary to put a children's play area outside in the garden to ensure they did not disturb other pub guests. Owner